Okay, we're ready to paint the engine. Um, I've got it all masked off, did it off camera, and I've actually sanded it all down, and I've cleaned it with some prep all. So it's all clean, ready to go. Got some little uh, rubbery things in all the holes I don't want uh, paint to get into. And um, I'm gonna paint it with uh, the VHT engine enamel. Uh, this is good up to 550 degrees. I'm probably gonna start, just hit the bottom, the front, the back. Uh, there's a little spot on the top I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna probably do that later, so. Let's see how this works. When you want to get off that darkest ground, the gravity pulls you straight down. Okay, so that's the first of three coats. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a second coat still in this orientation and get it get it all the sides and the bottom real good. And then the for the third coat, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the bottom of the oil pan, but then I'm gonna turn the engine over and that third coat's actually gonna go on facing the other direction. That way I'll make sure I get on the bottom side of all these gussets and stuff. So I think that'll make a good clear coating. And then I'm gonna put it on some heat, let it uh, let this stuff bake on, bake on pretty well. Okay, just finished putting on all three coats of the entire engine and the paint uh, instructions say that they want you to bake it in an oven 200 degrees for an hour. Well, obviously this is not going to fit. This is bigger than our turkey. So um, I've just put this little heater next to it. I'm going to let that sit for quite a while and then I'll come down. I'll set an alarm. I'll come down and uh, move it to the other side and try and just bake it in a little bit. It's not going to be as well baked as normal, but I'll give it some kind of a bake. And then we'll start unwrapping it. Okay, the paint I think turned out really nice. Um, I didn't paint the head because they're aluminum, and I just wanted to show off their aluminum, just a personal preference. But the rest of it looks good. I went back and looked at you know how I sped up some of that video, and it looks like I was kind of willy dilly with the thing. I'm pretty methodical with uh, with the painting. The painting turned out really nice. I got one run on the bottom. You know, unless you're wanting to climb underneath there, you know, nobody's going to see it. It doesn't really matter. It's an engine. But uh, I'm going to get all these off. These were put on. The book suggested putting these on so you didn't drop bolts in here and have to pull the heads back off. Uh, I'm going to get all this cleaned up. And the next thing we're going to do is we'll get the valley pan cover and the knock sensors all installed. Okay, next we're going to put on the valley pan cover. Uh, I painted it off camera and uh, actually got to bake this. So this is really nice. Just did for clean. You're not going to be able to see this. Doesn't really matter. We got new grommets in. These grommets came with the master rebuild kit. First, we got to make sure we get this uh, gasket on correct. You go one. It only goes one way. So we'll stick it there. put some of that fastener lubricant on.
Okay, so now we'll get some knock sensors. I got the Delphi. Lock sensors. Okay, and now for the valve covers. I uh, also painted these off camera. This is a uh, high temp paint as well. This was hard to get. I tried to get this off or barely tried to get it off. It didn't want to, so I just masked this off. I masked this fitting off where a hose is going to slide on there. I didn't want to paint that, and I was able to pull these bolts out and uh, and then and then spray paint it and just clean everything up, put it back together. But uh, and also my uh, a new gasket came with the the master rebuild kit, so we're gonna. Uh, Get these good looking valve covers installed. Are you kidding me? Okay, and then these get torqued down to 106 inch pounds, and they want to start from the center and work your way out, so. Okay, man, it's starting to look like an engine. Okay, I've purchased a new uh, wiring harness for these knock sensors, and um, we're going to get that installed. These just push on. Clip there, and then... Boy, those are nice and tight. Um, boy, those are really tight. Um, I don't know if you remember, and I don't know if I actually showed it in the previous, in the earlier video when I was taking this apart, but there was standing water. It was, it was probably an inch thick down in both of these cylinders where, um, rainwater or something had basically rushed in and got down in there. So I know there's a GM technical service bulletin talks about building a dam. I'm going to use some silicone in just a minute. I'm going to actually put a dam here. The engine sits high in the front, low in the back. So any water would potentially come from the front. So again, I'm going to build a dam that will veer off that water off down to this side channel and run down the side of the engine versus getting down to these sensors. That's why these, I think, probably fail so much is that, um, is that water gets down in there and shorts them out. Okay, that clips on good and we put this on, but man, I like the way these, these really fit snug. The only way water is going to get down in there is this little hole, but you kind of need is that heats and expands and stuff like that's going to need gas is going to have to get out of there so I'm going to route this out the back and then uh, let's see if I can get that get some of a dam built for this Okay, so I have a feeling that's kind of what they were thinking about. Again, water coming this direction. I wanted to hit this dam and come off the side and detour. So,
Okay, these are Felpro intake gaskets. It's a metal gasket with a rubber seal around it. It's actually got this little tab here and those just sit. Those are going to sit right on top of these head bolts. This bolt and this bolt. So we kind of put it in place, press it in, it slides down. Kind of locks it in place and so that won't move. That'll be pretty nice um, when I set the head on. I know these aren't going to move. And that was always an issue on the, the older style engines that I'm used to. So there's that one and here's the same thing for this side. That seems to fit really good. Alright, and now for the intake. The book suggests uh, blue thread locker, so I've put some blue thread locker on all ten of these bolts. Okay, like with anything that's long, it's got a bunch of bolts, needs to be torqued down, there's always a torque sequence because they want to make sure that you don't just get things, uh, especially in gaskets too, because you could get things bent out of shape and whatever. So, And the general th just of it seems to be you kind of start in the middle and you spiral your way out. So you're you're taking the load and you're, you're doing this with it. So we're going to take all these to 44 inch pounds. Listen for it, listen for it. Click, click. Okay, so before I painted this engine, I knew there were some places where, you know, like the water pump goes right here. And I didn't want paint where the water pump goes. GM and none of the places ever put paint between those type of components when you want a good seal, right? It's gonna get hot and that type of stuff. So I put a bunch of, I put some masking tape here and I sat this gasket up here in place. You can see where I punched in where the holes are. Uh, the, the mounting holes for the water pump put this in place and then I used a knife and I scribed around that masking tape that way just where this gasket is and realistic I just needed to be outside of these uh, the, the true gasket material but I went ahead and did it that way and that way now when I take this tape off It's gonna be a nice, giving me a nice clean surface to mount my water pump to. Let's just get rid of the most of it. Okay, so now when I get ready to put my water pump on, that'll go on there and uh, pull down tight and give me a good seal, metal to metal. No paint. I'm going to get this one scraped off and I'll be back. 
Okay, during the painting, you may have noticed that I took off the balancer, and I did that just solely to make it easier to paint this stuff up, and I didn't actually have it all the way installed originally. I went deep enough to get, make sure this rubber gasket was centered on this crankshaft. So I ended up pulling it back off, and now to actually in, reinstall it and get it on there uh, torqued properly, the only way to hold this crank from turning, the best way is to have your uh, flywheel, or in this case, the, I'm gonna put the original flex plate back on here because I don't care if I really mess that flex plate up but I'm going to install that on there temporarily and uh, and be able to secure that flex plate that'll keep this crank from spinning then I'll be able to torque this uh, balancer back on properly so I'm going to take you to the back of the engine where um, I've got the flex plate installed I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a locking mechanism uh, without a special tool to uh, to make that happen okay we're at the back of the engine and I've installed the old flex plate uh, this goes to an automatic transmission, which we're not going to use, so I don't mind if I damage this. And what I'm about to do is not really going to damage anything. Instead of trying to use these teeth like a lot of people do, what I'm going to do is, I know when I tighten up, when I try and torque down that harmonic balancer at the front, this the engine is going to try and spin this direction. This is going to try and go up. By putting this flux plate back on, putting a bolt temporarily in one of these spare holes, I'm going to use a clamp, and I'm going to clamp it on here. And I'm going to get that all tightened down. And what's going to happen is this bolt's going to basically be leveraging against this. And on the back side, it's going to go, it's going to spin until it reaches the bottom of that. And then it should not try and spin anymore. And that should hold that crank from any type of rotation. So let me get that finished tightened up. And I should be able to rotate this up right there. And that's going to, that came to a stop. That's not going to allow that crank to spin. I'm going to be able to torque the front, I believe. Uh, actually without any assistance okay so earlier when we installed we, we centered this whatever I kind of went over the fact I use this this is a bolt I use, bought it's that 16 millimeter 2 by 0 pitch and it's uh, I'm thinking 120 millimeters long it's longer than the standard bolt and the reason is is when you put this crank this uh, balancer on here it goes on that far if you try and use the old the the, the old bolt you're only going to have one or two threads on there, and if you try and crank this thing down, you're going to booger up those first threads. So this one is quite a bit longer, and it's going to allow us to get more threads on there before we start putting some torque on there. So we're going to get that on there, make sure this seems to be, we're not touching that seal yet. Another thing, the book says don't lubricate that seal. I thought that was interesting, uh, but they want to install this on, that, on a dry seal. So let's get that there, and we're going to get this at least started. Okay, it feels like it's getting a little a little tight. I don't know if I'm I'm running out of bolt or whatever. This bolt may be too long. So I'm gonna take this bolt out and I'm gonna put the original old bolt back in there. I'm gonna finish torquing this down with the old bolt. Then you actually pull the old bolt out and install the new bolt. Okay, so here is the new bolt. This is where we're going to ultimately end up with is this bolt installed. It's a, one of those torque to yield bolts. Um, but we're not going to put that in there yet. We still have to make sure we get this all the way seated where it needs to be. This is the old original bolt. I'm going to use this to do that final seating. So we're going to get this in here. We're going to use this to torque down. And the torque is 240 foot pounds. Uh, before I start torquing on that, even though I've got it locked in the back, as I'm, if I'm torquing down, it's going to try and push this engine down. I'm going to support the engine up the front here. Um, I actually may do it right here. Uh, I did this when we took it off. And um, just to make sure when I'm pushing down on this, you know, this thing's cantilevered off this engine stand. I don't want it to do any damage. It just doesn't make sense not to, not to support this. And I think I will. This is on here long, far enough. It won't do any damage. I'm going to put my jack stand just here just to help support the engine. Okay, so we got the old bolt back on there, and we're going to torque this down to 240 foot-pounds to make sure this thing is totally seated back, and then we're going to back that back off, but let's see if we can reach 240.
There we go. Okay, so the final installation is going to be, we're finally going to put our new bolt in there. I got some blue Loctite on this bolt and uh, it's going to go in according to the instructions. It's 40, 37 foot pounds and then 140 degrees. So let's get... Um, Get that 37 foot bounds first. Okay, there's 37 foot pounds. And do you remember our handy dandy torque gauge? Okay, so here we're at, I've zeroed it, I've zeroed in my gauge, and we're gonna go 140 degrees, which is 90 plus. 50 and it counts back down so I really got to go here to 40 90 110 20 30 40 yeah 140 pounds is going to be 140 degrees is going to be all the way over to this 40 so that's where I got to get to that's it 140 degrees. Okay, so the main part of this engine is now back together. We got a lot of accessories put on the front and we ultimately got a wiring harness. But we're gonna clean up that wiring harness. But uh, that's all I'm gonna be able to get to today. So we're gonna end this section here and uh, but we'll get more of this stuff on next time. All right, time to do a little quick mail call. Wanna do a little shout out for Drive Shaft Drew. Drive Shaft Drew, I, I noticed he followed and commented on a lot of the channels that I follow, a lot of the car video type stuff, and and so I went over to his channel, and uh, you know he's got kind of like a man cave over there. He's got a bunch of guy stuff and does things in his garage, fixes things here and there. But uh, also he's a va avid hunter, and uh, I enjoy hunting as well, and so we got that in common. So I contacted him, and he uh, just just a really nice guy, Drew. I, I appreciate uh, all the support you give and uh, I see that you're seeing a lot of my videos and I appreciate that so just a big shout out Drive Shaft Drew swing by his channel and uh, check out what he's got going on so as far as my videos I think this is part seven of my engine video um, I'll put a link where you can get back to video one so you can watch the whole series uh, there's actually a, a YouTube playlist if you actually click on that playlist it'll actually play all those videos in, in, in order so you won't miss any of them and then also I've got a playlist for the the project Project Rowdy which is what uh, this engine is going to go in It's going to go in a 1979 Jeep CJ7 so there's also a playlist that'll play all of those videos and episodes in order so you know that's a, if you're new to YouTube and don't understand the playlist piece that's a great way to watch you know get caught up on videos and, and um, and watch a complete series so I'll put up some links to that here in just a second and I uh, hope you enjoy your day appreciate you watching thanks jack it up